we're back to a weekly update. Sorry for last week. I need to take a little bit of time off. There were some personal things I've been dealing with, struggling with, um, that I don't want to go into. But I also, I was not feeling well. I was been, I've been very low energy. I'm sleeping weird. It's, it's very odd. I, in the afternoon, I get hit. I can barely keep my eyes open. I nod off for an hour, two hours. Then I'm awake from my usual till one or two o'clock in the morning and then I'll fall asleep and then I'll wake up again at three o'clock for a couple hours and it's been very strange and um, I don't know what it is, you know, and everybody says, go see a doctor. Well, what's a doctor going to do? Uh, <laughs> I had a lifetime of doctors and if I feel that I need to, I will. Uh, I think I'll get through this okay, but it's it's been very odd. Uh, after eating something and having a week of running back and forth to the bathroom and just not feeling good, that energy just has not returned. So we're not here to whine about it, but I just want to let you know um, that's what's been going on. So I, I just needed some personal time. I did get out the uh, restaurant video. I, I went to that restaurant, uh, had a couple days collapse afterwards. It was uh, all I could do to go, but it, it was fun. I really appreciated it. And the food was, it was really spectacular. The steak was as good as, as could be. It was very flavorful. Uh, you could see it on the menu, but they've got Colombian steak, which is very good. And you've got Argentine beef, which is what I had, which is what you saw in the video. But you've also got uh, U.S. Angus beef as an option for a couple different cuts. A New York strip and a tri-tip. Now, for the driver's license, it's been very frustrating. Hopefully we're at the end of the road and Monday I can go pick up my driver's license. That's the plan. I don't know if I explained this before or not on, on video, but what happened was this, I was going to go to a different one, Daytona. And then it was recommended to me to go to this one, Metropolitan, said they'll really work with you as far as already having a license. Well, that sounded good to me. I mean, sitting through, you know, 20, 30 hours of classes in Spanish, it just didn't seem very productive. <laughs> So um, so I went there, and they were very accommodating. What I didn't know was the recommendation came based on the owner who had since died. So the man had died just a handful of months ago, and his wife took over the business. But his wife didn't know hardly anything about it. And... It was shut for a short period of time after he died, and so there were no employees. She went out and hired uh, those two office girls that you saw, office ladies. I keep getting told I shouldn't say girls. I, you know, if you're of a certain age, that's just what you say. And, um, you know, I'm not going to apologize for it. I realize that today that's not the way it's supposed to be, I guess. But, you know, you had a lifetime of speaking a certain way, and... Um, People don't like it, they'll have to get over it. The intent is what it is, you know, it's just a descriptive word. So anyway, uh, not to get off track, which I just did, they had no experience. And so you've got an owner's wife who has very little understanding of it, and, but she's been reading the books to get herself up to speed. Then you got a couple office people who just kind of run through the motions. And as a consequence, I didn't know this. Nobody, nobody was aware of this. Um, <laughs> as a consequence, there were a number of things that came up that were supposed to be done that I didn't do that caused delays. For example, before you begin your classes, you have to go to Transito and you have to sign up. You have to put yourself in the system so they get your... A photo, your fingerprint, your signature, they set you up in the system so that everything that takes place after that gets added to this one area, you know, your file. Well, they didn't know that, so they didn't tell me that. 
And if you're Colombian, there's a lot of reasons you're already in that system. But if you're a foreigner, and I was their first foreigner, at least since the owner had died, uh, they weren't aware of that. So they didn't tell me that. So all the time that they're recording me and uh, having me call on the video and they put my video face in the in the in in the computer it was going in their own computer was not connecting to the internet or the national database so when we got all done i go to the medical center and they say well you're not in the system we can only do three out of the four tests so i did the three passed and the fourth one was actually where they uh, do the medical exam so I go, they told me to go back to the office. So I go back to the office. They don't know what, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. And the guy who gave me the driving test came in. He speaks some English and he's aware of this stuff. Uh, he actually probably should be running this office. And he says, well, did you sign up for, you know, it, it, it transit to, no, I didn't know anything about that. Nobody mentioned it. And uh, he said, well, you've got to do that. So he actually drove me there and he waited for quite a while but he had um, uh, uh, lessons to give so he, after a couple hours he had to leave but that was very nice of him I go in I get it taken care of that was the day I had to stand for four hours uh, very very tiring <laughs> I get that done I go back and they said well now we have to enter everything back in the computer and we can't just dump it because it has to be spaced out it's part of the checks and balances. But they had everything kept in their computer from when I did it before. So what they have to do is every day they have to go in and act like uh, I'm doing the class and and then put in piecemeal the 20 or 30 classes. Okay, so what are you going to be done? I said, well, I'll be done Tuesday. I checked Tuesday. No, we meant a, a week from Tuesday. Next week, Tuesday. Okay. So we go through all that. I checked Tuesday. Uh, they don't know anything about it. Let, let me get back to you. And they said, uh, Thursday, we'll have it done Thursday. Thursday, yes, it's all done. Well, in the meantime, I'd gone back and done the, the uh, medical exam, which I talked about in videos previous, so you know about that. And, and so that was done, and they were able to enter it in. So they confirmed that you know everything is, is set up right. So now I'm just waiting for them to get the classes in so I can go back to Transito and basically just uh, give them the medical certificate, which is actually already in the computer, but they get, you give them that, that causes them to uh, put the license in process. You wait and they, they, put, they print off the license and laminate it, whatever. And they give you your little plastic uh, driver's license right there while you wait i told about 30 minutes and there was more to this story but uh, this is just an update um, i had some help along the way met some nice new people so all of that was uh, was a very positive experience and learning you know some of the pitfalls so i am doing the driving video i didn't want to uh, finish this video the driving video until I actually had license in hand and that's this is Saturday the 13th and I'm supposed to pick it up Monday so I'll be going Monday afternoon uh, they tell me that you go after 3 30 in the afternoon otherwise in the morning you're going to be waiting in line behind a million people that are not doing driving license or doing other things but if you go in the afternoon that line will be done and gone and the driver's license is a very quick thing in comparison so that's what i'll do i'll go monday afternoon around 3 30 and hopefully it'll be done i'll come home and then over the next couple days after that i can finish the uh, driving license video which i've got about uh, half three quarters of the way done so that's that. That's that's what's going on with the driver's license. And what else do we have? Oh, I had a visitor last weekend. I don't know. We I didn't have a coffee time, so I don't think I told you about it. This was the uh, lady who I met in Cuenca four, five, five years ago. Uh, in my first year in, in Cuenca, as a matter of fact and uh, she was there with her children and uh, 
struggling and we we made friends and kept in touch we'd go to lunch once in a while uh, it wasn't a dating situation but we we're good friends and um like all my friends i only <laughs> only see them or contact them every every so often so anyway um she really struggled in Cuenca, her children, I, I mentioned in a video some time ago about her children to come home from school crying because they would get picked on because they're Colombian. You know, it's a, it's a cruel culture there, unlike uh, a lot of things that you hear. I mean, if you're a gringo, yeah, they're going to treat you real nice because it's, you're part of the hierarchy and they're very class oriented and so if you're a north american then you're considered to be in the upper echelon like a white spanish person uh, or a rich person but if you're uh, on one of the other rungs of the ladder you don't get treated so well so these people will tell you, oh they're the nicest people in the world that's a crock i'm not disputing that they weren't treated nice but um there's there's much more to that picture uh, some of the younger people are breaking that mold, but the culture in general is, as I've talked about in videos in the past and given examples, and this was all brought to my attention by an Ecuadorian friend, uh, born and raised in Cuenca, who pointed it out to me, and that's when I began to notice treatment of others. You know, I hadn't gotten that treatment. You know, so I was like other people that, you know, but I'm not going to argue that it doesn't exist. I actually learned that it does exist. They were there as Colombians and in Cuenca, if you're Colombian, if you're a female, then you're a whore. And if you're a male, then you're a drug dealer, drug user. And you're not judged on the merits of who you are. You're treated like that. So, for example, she would go get a job, and within the first day or two of working, the owner would expect her to have sex because she's, after all, she's just a whore. Um, so she would have to quit, and you know, and basically she was doing nails and hair and things like that, uh, a more sideline, uh, or she would work for a woman's um, hair salon she had jobs like that but it was hit and miss it was very problematic besides you've got ecuadorians that need work and so you're going to be the last one hired and if you are hired you're going to get paid substandard wages and while there's laws about it there's no way to enforce it so if if you're supposed to make well i just throw some figures out these aren't real but let's say you're supposed to make five dollars an hour well if you're a colombian female then you might get two dollars an hour even though five is like the legal minimum which is, that's not what it is there but just as an example so you get less than half of what you should be getting so it was very difficult there and cuenca is not cheap so she struggled and her kids you know they come home crying they're two girls and you know they would be told that they were whores and it, it, it was just a bad situation but she couldn't afford to just up and leave so anyway she finally put it together and was able to return to Colombia and she's living in Cali so she's back around her family she's got a job she's so happy now her one daughter stayed in she separated from her husband for seven or eight years but her one daughter stayed in Cuenca because her ex-husband moved to Cuenca. <laughs> Another reason she wanted to move back to Cali. And I don't want to get too deep into this, but so her one daughter is in Cuenca. She's kind of disowned that daughter because she that daughter is now of an age, she's what, 16, I think. And she's uh, very upset because she's posting uh, half-naked videos on Instagram and She's kind of living out all the things that people said about her. So there, there was a falling out. So the other daughter is just very sweet. She's 14 now. Uh, she's very sweet, uh, knows a little bit of English, but she's hilarious. Uh, I, she cracks me up. So that daughter and, and her, she, they came for two days, one night, used my uh, uh, Ringo bedroom, my spare bedroom. But here's the thing. They both have long curly hair 
for days afterwards. I think I mentioned this in the coffee time two weeks ago. So it wasn't last weekend, it was the weekend before. My apartment, I just now, this week, finally got all the hair out of this apartment. You know, with the wind that's always blowing through and I always got the doors open, this hair, you know, that just for two days is long black hairs. It's like all over my apartment. Everywhere you walk, I'd mop and be in the mop. It's, it's just taking forever to get the hair out of the apartment. But it was really nice seeing them. And I thought that she didn't want to go on camera, but her daughter was excited about doing it. But she ended up having to leave uh, Sunday morning, actually just before the coffee time. Uh, she got a call, had to go into work early Monday, and had to go home and prepare something. So, uh, so that was that. And the last thing I'll talk about is a car. I went out, and now that we're getting close to being able to use the car, sitting is, you know, if some of you probably know, I mean, it's it's really a horrible thing to do to a car. You can, you can park it, and there'd be absolutely nothing wrong with it, but six months later, you've got issues. Well, I've, I've had an issue all along with the battery going dead, and uh, it's a new battery. So I bought a battery charger. I found one on sale and got it shipped from Bogota. I don't remember now. It's like $25 or something. And it worked re really well. Charged the battery up good. So I, I poked around. I discovered that there is a fan somewhere. Um, I had to stop uh, for whatever. There were reasons that I had to stop. But I did discover that there's a fan that's on all the time. And that's running the battery dead. So I'll figure that out and I'll get that taken care of. So I can take care of that. I thought it was a short, fortunately, this is what it is. And I'll be able to pinpoint it. There's a flat tire. I have to get that taken care of. I went, it was out driving around one day after I had that repair done. And apparently picked up a, a, a puncture, a slow leak. And so I've got to get that taken care of. There is somebody that will come here. Uh, I, my money's all been going to the school and some various things, <clears throat> so I've been holding off on, on the car itself, but now I have to pay attention to it. But there's somebody who will come here, take it off, take it out, get it repaired, bring it back, put it on the car, uh, so I'll do that. But the big issue that's happened is uh, the last time I had it running, uh, injectors were sticking. <laughs> this wasn't an issue before. And ended up dumping a bunch of gas down into the engine and uh, running it back through the exhaust and it destroyed the catalytic converter. So now I've got a plug catalytic converter. So if you ever had one, you know, there's no power. And so I have to figure out what that's going to be. Uh, I don't know what that's going to cost. I'm a little concerned about it. I think that'll be the big expense. And then I've got the Techno. That's your annual uh, vehicle inspection. And it's up this month, as a matter of fact. It's out in March. I, I think um, I think next week it expires. So I need to get that taken care of. And then it's good to go. It's ready to drive outside of... Uh, it needs a real scrubbing. The dirt on it is just embedded in the car. It is so bad. I can't even... It's hard to describe how bad it is. So I've got that to do. So that's it. That's an update on me, the channel, a video, the car, and what's going on. I've got a number of people coming in May, so I've got between now and May to get all this taken care of. If there's anybody uh, planning to come in March and April, please make sure you let me know. There were a couple emails. I responded to them, but I never got any follow-up. So when that happens, I assume that we're not going to be doing anything. So if you think you emailed, but you didn't respond, uh, there's nothing planned. You're not scheduled. So, um, you know, if you show up, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, that's it. I will be at coffee time tomorrow as normal. Uh, somebody said, you're missing a lot of them. Well, I went back and looked in the last year. So that's what, 50, what's 56 coffee times? I've missed three. So... Come on, give me a break. I'm doing an average of uh, 10 videos a month. It's not what some people were saying. Anyway, that's it. Thanks. See you tomorrow.